Hi there guys, Ruath here from TabletopMinis.com and welcome to another Q&A episode 4. So I'm really thankful for all the comments we got after the, after the last one. Um, I kind of struggled in the last episode to get enough questions together from the various videos, but um, the response has been really good to the last one, so we've got plenty that we can talk through here. I think we've got about 70 comments on that video. So um, yeah, it's been about two weeks since we did one of these, so um, let's just f get started. So we've got a Let's start here with the comments. So Eric's coins is saying, Hi, me again. I can't find tabletop minis on Facebook. I would like to suggest you make one so that your fans can see updates and when you're having live shows, thanks. It's not really a question, but um, we do have a Facebook page. It did change from the one we started with. It went from a personal page to like a, an entertainment website page. So there's a link in the video description below. So that, that's our Facebook page. And we're updating it quite often now with like uh, pictures of what we're doing every day. So um, that's a good place to go just to see what we're doing on a kind of day-to-day -day basis. And also in our live streams, we use the Facebook page to kind of share stuff and um, and you know talk over stuff. Like you can put link, because you can't put links into the Google Hangouts um, chat. We've been using that so that you guys can kind of show us the pictures, what you're painting, and, and um, yeah, it's working out really good. So the link's below, and check it out. Uh, Redbeard Boss, play a big game. Are the battles smaller because the time it takes and the size of the video? Um, not really. I mean, the smaller your battles are, obviously, the, the quicker the game can go. And um, because we've been starting new armies like Chaos and Stormcasts and so on, we haven't had much painted. So a lot of the battles we've had are a relatively small size, which has been good because with Age of Sigmar, um, everybody being quite new to the game, um, you know, it's been good to sort of demonstrate the rules on a c quite small, manageable, understandable basis. So um, we're definitely going to do some larger games. We were talking about this in our painting hangout uh, last night and f a few days ago. Um, you know, we want to see some or we want to play some uh, much larger battles um, where I think we'll put all our chaos and Skaven together against maybe uh, quite a big elf and stormcast army or maybe th get the dwarfs in there as well. So we definitely will be doing bigger games. I know there's a lot of people eager to see um, how Age of Sigmar, um, you know, how it works on a larger scale um, and whether the battles are still as interesting as and as exciting as uh, fantasy. So you'll definitely be seeing some of that very, very soon. I think our next battle report's actually going to be quite a large one. So um, yeah, that should be good. Uh, all elves are darker saying, may Sigmar curse those traitors who are reposting your videos. I did put some copyright infringement complaints in for them, other channels that were reposting our videos. They've been took down now, them channels, and it doesn't look like anybody's reposting our videos, which is good. Uh, Jeremy Lambert here is saying, hey guys, love the channel, love your battle reports. It might seem silly to say it, but one of the things I enjoy the most is how much you all love the games and fluff and just how nice you are. I watch too many battle reports where it devolves to bickering over rules and people with a holier-than-thou attitude <laughs> had to stop playing in the actual Games Workshop stores for that very same reason. But it's all genuine with you guys. You really care, and that's so wonderful. Thanks for the positive comments, like love hearing stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we play just for the fun of it. We're, we're not really super competitive or anything like that. Although we are playing to win. It's, uh, we're not, you know, that's not the most important thing. He says, thanks for everything. And as far as what army, I'd love to see more of dwarfs. But then as a dwarf player, I'm a bit biased. We'd love to see an undead army, like you mentioned, as well as Sylvaneth, if you decide to go with another army. So we've got undead on, on the way. Uh, I'm currently painting through some Vargheis and um, a few more bits to, d to go before you see, th see that on the table. Um, I think we'll probably get a small Sylvaneth force as well, just so we can use um, like the summoning rules from the realms and stuff like that. So, um, and, and maybe we'll incorporate the Sylvaneth into our existing wood elves and get some more wood elves to kind of make that really kind of a wood elfy type army with Sylvaneth as like a small detachment. But um, yeah, well, let's see. Hooves of Doom, he says, I really like the realm rules. I agree with your sentiment concerning the limited edition books. I bought a few when they were first released and a few since then, but although I'm a major collector, I don't quite think they're worth, worth the money. Uh, if I was an adamant fan of just one or two factions, perhaps I'd think differently. Yep, yeah, I agree with that. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, it's not really a question, but let's, Russell Jones is saying here, I'll try and skip through the stuff that isn't really questions, just so we can actually talk over the question parts of it, rather than the um, 
the comments. So, um, do you think this is Russell Jones who's saying? Do you think the starter kit is balanced in favour of the Stormcast? Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think Games Workshop have tried to push Stormcast Eternals as um, not only their sort of you know kind of flagship army for Age of Sigmar, but um, you know, I think they're trying to make the Stormcast quite like the Space Marines of, of Age of Sigmar, where they're kind of, uh, you know, hoping that they'll be maybe the best selling army there. He also says here, I know that they are the poster child of the reboot, but trying to be a Stormcast player and have fair battles is tough. Also, which army would you like to see new models for? Do you think Tyrion and Teclis will return to battle now? They are a god, sort of. Um, I think so. I mean, I think they're going to be available to play and in, in, and that's going to continue like that. Same with Nagash and all of these other characters. Um, models I'd like to see, the new ones, it's basically all of the new um, factions that we haven't seen models for. So I'm not too excited about the Stormcast, or I'm certainly not as excited about the Stormcast as I am about like the Fire Slayers, which is the new dwarfs and um, the, like mercenary dwarfs and the new elves, and basically all of the old um, factions that we had in War Warhammer Fantasy Battle, seeing what the new models look like, I think that's what I'm really excited to see, and see whether they try and stick to the theme that they had before, or you know, they're gonna start looking a little different. Um, I'm really uh, interested in finding out what goes on there. Thomas Martins he says, I know for I know I for one use bat reps to learn how to play the armies in the new game. I have no plans to ever play Stormcast and I already have Corn Warriors and Marauders, so all the new models are pointless for me. I have Undead, Chaos Legions, and now Sylvaneth. Those are the armies I would like to see. My opponent has Dark Elves and Chaos Dwarfs. Um, okay, Redbeard Boss here question. If you decide to add Nur Nurgle, do you work with green stuff and do conversions? I've been building a Nurgle catapult. And it will be done before I get a camera, so it will be just screencast vid about it. But I found myself really enjoying the green stuff vids on YouTube. Um, yeah, we, we work with green stuff and milliput, and um, they're probably my favorite putties. Um, milliput's quite, it, it's better for holding detail, but it's more brittle, so uh, you can mix them together in whatever ratio you want. Um, the green stuff's more kind of malleable, um, and so, and if there's anything that needs to sort of, you know, anything that needs strength um, without breaking, green stuff's better than milliput. But milliput's good for getting, um, you know, for like gap filling or for, um, yeah, I guess just holding the details. So, I mean, I've done quite a bit of sculpting in the past. You know, I went through a little phase where I, where I took up sculpting and, you know, with the sort of the wire, the wire models that you, you sculpt around. So you get, you get some wire. You sort of you twist it in. You, you get the the right proportions of the body, and then you green stuff around it. And uh, it's quite difficult. It's more difficult than you'd think. Um, I definitely think it's fun to do, and it's um, it's definitely worthwhile. It's just um, yeah, it's, you know, if you're if you're into that kind of thing, um, we don't tend to convert stuff very often. Um, it's more for fixing things or. Um, you know, small bits here and there, but it's definitely um, a good thing to do. And the more you practice it, the better, better you'll get. So, um, yeah. Okay, let's see, what's our next question here? Klaus Zoidberg, he says, how many people are working in your team? Could you introduce them in a video? Well, <laughs> there's just the three of us, really, three brothers, um, myself, Ead, and Yahya. Um, you, if you've been in the painting hangouts, you would have seen them because we're, we're all chatting on the hangout. Um, and yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go down to the next question. So Eric's coins here. He's saying, uh, my question is, are you jealous of wargaming for fun or a fan? I mean, since, since you're both British, I think, a fan from Norway. So uh, I like wargaming for fun. I've watched their bat reps. Uh, I think the guys on there are really cool. They're really like laid back, or they seem laid back, like the type of people that I'd enjoy playing um, Age of Sigmar with. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're cool. And they're British. <laughs> Okay, what have we got next? Uh, Timo Suomela is asking, 
There's been some debate in the internet about summoning. For example, can Chaos Wizards summon demons who are not in the current game you're playing? So can you summon only units whose War Scrolls are in play or any one in the Chaos list? What's your opinion on this? I know summoning is quite a big, um, a big deal. Like there's, there's people doing different things. Um, some people believe that because um, the War Scroll says that you know, if you're if you if you have this model, then you can um, any wizards can use the spell to summon them. So some people believe you have to have the models on the battlefield to summon them in. So other people think it just has to be models in your collection, and you automatically can summon them in. And um, there's um, a few different sort of rule, like different ways of looking at the rules or rules interpretations in between. We've not played with summoning, so it's never, it's not really been something that we've had to actually face in a game yet. But my vampire counts or my undead, they're, you know, they're quite big for the summoning. So we will have to look at it seriously uh, soon. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm a bit on the fence with this because um, I think both ways is kind of makes sense in a way. Like, um, if you're going to summon something, you have to have the models for it ready to go. So, would you not just have the models on the battlefield anyway at the start? Um, but I don't really disagree with the fact that you can summon them even though they're not there at the start. So, um, if you've got somebody who's abusing summoning or trying to abuse summoning, then I think it's... Um, you know, it can potentially be quite game breaking if you've got like, uh, you know, somebody who's made their army, a summoning type of army where they're just trying to summon as many units as they can, spam as many units. But there's lots of people house ruling that, you know, they're saying that if the summoner dies, all of the summoned units um, disappear from the battlefield. They're saying like, um, I think the az Azur comp it limits the number of summoned units per wizard to I think two or three. Um, so there's ways to kind of um, balance it a little bit, but like I said, we've not experimented w with it on the battlefield, so um, yeah, I don't really have a strong feeling about it. Um, as long as it's not been abused, I think whatever whatever you guys agree um, seems reasonable. I think that's probably the way to deal with it. Stefan Thomas here is asking, Hi guys, I'd also like to ask, how, how do you interpret Alariel the Radiant's Boon of Life? If you read the rules, does it mean that this spell can only be cast on multiple wound models units and not on single wound model units? So I have a Lariel and I have the War Scroll up here. So we can take a quick look at it. Um, let's see. So Ilariel's Boon of Life, with this gesture, magical energy infuses Ilariel's allies, their wounds and injuries healing in an instant. Boon of Life has a cast value of 6. If successfully cast, pick a unit within 20 inches. One model in that unit heals d6 wounds. In addition, until your next hero phase, the energies of this spell persist. Roll the dice each time a model in the unit suffers a wound or mortal wound. On a 6, that wound is instantly healed or is ignored. So I think that can be cast on... on any type of unit, whether it's a unit of like um, archers that all have one wound, one wound, then um, I think that's fine. Um, it's just obviously, you know, when you do the initial one model in that unit heals d6 wounds. If you're casting on a mo on a unit that has only one wound models, you can't really heal wounds, but it does give them the buffs so that any wounds they take after that point um, on a six they are ignored. So. I think Boon of Life can be cast on any unit. Um, that's my interpretation of, of that rule. Uh, ben Diman is saying, what do you guys think of the Kings of War game system? I've watched some Kings of War uh, battle reports. It looks quite interesting. Um, it definitely a tighter rule system than uh, Warhammer Fantasy was. Um, we haven't played it. I know you can play it with existing fantasy models, but... Um, yeah, we've just not, not tried it. it. We may try it at some point. Um, yeah, I, I guess it's pretty popular. It's one of the... It's, it's, I think it's probably the most popular alternative to Fantasy Battle, isn't it? Because you can use your own miniatures from your Games Workshop collection um, in Kings of War. But yeah, I've not really tried it, so I can't give you too much of an opinion. 
Okay, let's see what else have we got here. Uh, Stefan Thomas, he's asking, Hi guys, love the battle reports, keep them coming. A couple of things I'd like to ask. I'm one of the Legion that properly threw my teddy out of the cult when Games Workshop blew up the old world. I'm finding it really hard to come around to Age of Sigmar for reasons I won't bang on about here. Do you think that Games Workshop will, will revise the existing Warhammer Fantasy Battle War Scrolls, such as addressing the lack of potency on some chariots, or do you think that Games Workshop will just leave them behind? Um, also, my friend has the view that Games Workshop are rebranding to Warhammer because they're no longer a Games Workshop. He believes they are taking a new direction to focus more on becoming a model producing company. Thus, the short rules meaning less time and money spent on books. Um, his point is that once upon a time, Games Workshop had a fair few games in production at once, but now they have just two, Lord of the Rings, Faltering. Uh, what do you think? Also, a note on camera style, take a look at Angry Joe's AVP board game camera setup. He uses a board level miniatures view as well as normal camera views that might work better on small battles, just a thought. So, um, I think, uh, I think, I'm not sure whether Games Workshop would update the existing ones. I, they may do. I mean, you can see from, some of them are a little bit silly. You wouldn't expect that from Games Workshop, actually. You know, like the ones where it's like, put a dice in each hand, hold it out. If your opponent guesses the hand that you've got the dice in, then you get a buff or, if it's dark outside, then you get a buff and uh, like stuff like that. I think is pretty silly, and I'm surprised. Although it's quite fun, well, fun as in it kind of takes away some of the like. Um, yeah, I think it's taking it too far, and I would like to see that all that stuff took out, but I'm not sure Games Workshop will. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. I think they're going to keep the War Scrolls for all the miniatures produced. I think they're going to keep that on top of all the new stuff that comes out, but whether they'll revise them, um, I would actually doubt, but uh, I would like to see some of them revised. Okay, Charles Lane here, he's saying, how did you manage to paint all that Age of Sigmar minis to such an excellent level in such a short amount of time? Your minis look fantastic. Well, thanks, Charles. Um, we just painted away. I mean, we were in. I mean, I wouldn't say we rushed them because we we weren't trying to like uh, get them finished as soon as possible at all costs. We were just kind of. Um, we spent quite a lot of time painting, and because there's three of us, uh, although it was only just me and Yahya who did the painting for the for this, I did the, all of the chaos, and he did the stormcasts, and um, yeah, it went pretty pretty quick. Um, a batch painted the reavers and the blood warriors. And um, following the Warhammer TV guide for it, actually, um, which which is really good, um, and yeah, it just went pretty quick. So I think with painting, as long as you, you know, you can, you've just got to get on with it. It's like <laughs> if you know, if you put a little amount of time and you keep coming back and stopping coming back, it's hard to get things done. You you should try as much as you can to just sit down and just you know, have a proper session where you just paint paint away and the time just flies. And then you kind of get all the minis done really quickly. So, yeah. Um, okay, we've got here Sigmachi is asking, last Age of Sigmar Battle Report with Elves and Skavens wasn't really balanced. Do you guys try to play one or two turns before actually recording? Uh, no, we don't. We, ju we just do it like a rough balance, like a war machine for war machine type of thing or hero for hero, but if it's like Imric on a dragon, then you know, that'd be matched by more than just one small hero. Um, yeah, it's quite rough balancing that we've been doing. Um, I don't think we've done a terrible job of balancing. I think it's been generally okay, but uh, yeah, we're gonna maybe talk a little bit about comps and different ways of balancing a little bit later. So, um, next thing he says is, do you think it is possible to make a 1v1v1 battle the actual EOS rules? Well, we, we kind of did that, and I mean, after this comment, um, we we had our three-way Skaven, Dward, and Elves, and basically out of the box Age Sigmar rules. Um, and it worked pretty well, I thought. So, I think he can do that for sure. Do you plan to create a campaign with a map and objectives for Age of Sigmar. We're definitely going to do some narrative campaigns for Age of Sigmar. Um, we'll probably start one 
really soon we're going to put some effort into um, you know actually making up that narrative campaign very soon so yep definitely do you think that magic is dead in Age of Sigmar? No, not really. Um, or it's maybe not as sort of complex as it used to be. Um, but no, it's not dead. And I've got to say, I, I kind of preferred the the old magic system. Like, do you remember when um, back in the day, what was the box set called? The magic box set. Um, this was like in, back in the 90s. Battle magic, that's it. Where you had like all of the different decks for bright wizards and all this type of stuff and like I quite like that um I quite like the old magic so I wouldn't say it's dead in Age of Sigmar but it's definitely not as prominent I, I would say and he also says here could Games Workshop release a new magic book with lots of new spells quite possibly I think quite possibly they've kind of limited it so that all wizards kind of like your, your average wizard has like arcane bolt mystic shield and one um, depending on what race they are and stuff one like um, specific spell on the top of that which isn't a big selection I guess it simplifies the game quite a lot um, but yeah I think you know when we talk about like depth in Age of Sigmar and uh, we were talking about this on the Hangout last night, you know, we, we'd like to see more depth in um, things like that type of thing, you know, where maybe they give you an optional magic expansion which l allows you to, to do a whole lot of other things, but it still doesn't affect the, for newcomers to the game, you know, it, they just pick up the basic set with the basic magic and um, it's easy to get into the game, uh, like, you know, easy to learn, difficult to master, I think that's kind of the mantra that that works for uh, ga for gaming systems. So I think it'd be great if they did something like that, and uh, for sure I'd definitely buy and use it. Uh, could you update your gallery of minis on the website to show new ones? Um, yeah, we will do. I actually haven't updated the showcase. I wasn't sure whether many people looked at that on the website, so it hasn't changed for months, but we've got loads of new picks and stuff, so I think we're gonna take some um, proper army photos and special character photos and stuff and uh, you know we'll put them up on the showcase and he also says what do you think of Malifaux um, I've read the Malifaux like the a little bit of the background to it it sounds like a really interesting game I've never played it it seems really cool that you can use cards rather than dice for um, determining outcomes um, yeah, it's definitely on the hit list. You know, it's up there with like like Malifaux, Infinity, Kings of War, um, War Machine. They're they're kind of the non Games Workshop games that we definitely like to cover in some form. And I think Malifaux's Malifaux's uh, definitely one of the one of the good ones, or it looks like one of the really good ones. So hopefully we'll cover it at some point. Do you co convert your Necromunda minis to show their actual equipment? Um, y usually, uh, we did in the past, we haven't with these minis because um, you know we've recently got them and we haven't really been spending too much time on the Necromunda uh, gangs, we just got them painted up. But um, I think with Necromunda and Mordheim, you know, a lot of the fun of playing the game is actually doing the conversions and you know, you, you've got your, your the model's got a name, he's got a story, he's got his wounds and stuff, and you know, when you get him new stuff, if you can show that on the model, I think that's great. So, um, yeah, I would like to do that, and we, we may do that as the campaign goes on. And, okay, so let's see what else we've got. Uh, yeah, there's lots of comments here, um, sort of um, good feedback for the videos, the three-way um, fight. A lot of you, I think, enjoyed that because you don't really see it very often on, on channels. Uh, David Smith is asking another question. How does your traffic now compare to the channels before Age of Sigmar? So I guess before Age of Sigmar, that was kind of um, June. W I mean, we started the channel around about then, so we had only had a couple of weeks of uh, footage before Age of Sigmar came up. And then, w because we had a, uh, one of the first Age of Sigmar battle reports, um, and that got a lot of views, and we got a lot of subscribers through that first video, um, I would say our traffic's a lot more now than it was before Age of Sigmar, but we had just started 
just before Age of Sigmar as well. So um, who's to say what the difference would look like if it wasn't a new release um, kind of in that starting period? Um, but yeah, I, I mean, w you know, Age of Sigmar has been a good thing for sure um, for the channel. And, you know, we're loving it. We're getting kind of carried away with Age of Sigmar. You know, if you look at before Age of Sigmar came out, we kind of, w we were planning on doing some sort of schedule like we do a Blood Bowl video, a Warhammer fantasy video, then maybe a 40k, then a Necromunda, Battlefleet Gothic, more time, and just kind of cycle it so that the campaigns are con continually evolving. Um, but then Age of Sigmar came and then we just started, kind of got sucked into it and most of our videos since that point has been Age of Sigmar. Although we've done a couple of the like Necromunda and stuff like that, we've done a couple more videos. Um, yeah, we, we definitely want to cover them, uh, other specialist games and get the campaigns, you know, um, moving on a regular basis. So it's not like one video every month or two for Necromunda or more time. Um, so yeah, I think hopefully we'll get around to that soon. Um, but you know, we're because we're doing so much painting and we've got so much new stuff. Um, we're going through this period where we're spending a lot of time painting, and um, you know, we're doing sort of a video every couple of days, uh, a battle report. But I'd like to, I'd like to um, up the level of content that we're putting out. So we're doing like a video, at least you know, five vid at least five battle reports a week, something like that where we have like um, maybe two Age of Sigmar, a 40k, um, like a Necromunda, Mordheim, and then, uh, you know, the Q&As and, and uh, painting hangouts that we've been doing and uh, on the table episodes, all that sort of stuff in between. So I don't think we're, uh, we're putting out enough content at the moment. I think we've, uh, because we're doing so much painting, but I think we're soon you're going to see, uh, we're going to kind of get into more of a production mode where we're, getting ahead of ourselves with filming so that we, you know, we have a good stock of video ahead of us so we can keep releasing on a good schedule. Okay, what else have we got here? Uh, let's see. Uh, Darvid Oba saying, hi guys, love your channel. Please keep using the rules for the different realms. I'm also eager to see more diversity in the armies because I'm curious how the old units perform in Age of Sigmar. As for questions, have you got any plans to try some self-made scenarios in the future? I think Age of Sigmar is really great for this kind of creativity. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I think sometimes we do detract from the rules in small ways, you know, um, with like realm rules, like um, when we did a three-way, for example, we didn't use the Sylvaneth wood summoning um, or rolling for that at the start of the turns. Um, I think we will do some custom scenarios as well, like m like a lot, not just a small um, variant of an existing scenario, but our own like objectives and stuff. Uh, it's not hard. I think the story allows you to do that quite easily. So, yep, definitely. Yep, there's lots of positive comments here. It's really nice actually scrolling through um, the comments from you guys because it's really really positive and like it, you know it really makes us feel like what we're doing is a good thing and like. Uh, you know, the channels channels moving forward. So Warhammer Games Club, he's saying, great work, loving the video guys for all of the Age of Sigmar stuff. Nice to see a group who play in a similar fashion to how my club does. Roll some dice, have some laughs, and have a good old chat about it afterwards. And then some suggestions about um, maybe playing Maelstrom of War rules from 40k in Age of Sigmar, which is like the, the card objectives that you get every turn and you place objectives on the table so that you're, you can't just put all your forces in the middle and fight um, you know, straight down the middle. You've got to kind of spread out on the board in case you have to capture a certain objective on a specific turn. So um, that would be interesting. We thought about doing it for a three-way battle. We ended up um, not doing that just because we thought it might overcomplicate things for our first three-way battle. But um, yeah, that's quite interesting. Uh, th I guess that's what, how you've been playing it. It stops a massive scrum in the middle. Um, very little adaptation needed. And so, what he's saying here is that we started off like you just, or well, what he says, yeah, we started off like you just chatting with your opponent about, you know, balancing the armies. Like you take 10 Glade Guard, we take 10 Clan Rats, I'll take a Treeman, you take a Hydra, that type of thing. So we came up with a nifty little slot system, and um, this is in his games club. 
it's not points and makes no attempt to be. Um, not everything is exactly equal. All it lets you do is go along your shelf of models and go unit of those, one of those, one of those, until you hit the agreed slot limit. So saves a bit of time uh, for those who are pushed on a gaming night. That sounds quite interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that, 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 that would work quite well. I don't see anything, any reason why or any bad point to that. Um, yeah, I mean, lots of people are doing lots of different things to balance. Um, you know, we don't really have to do that because we just talk to each other beforehand and we're not really that pushed for time, like if you're turning up at a games club. But, um, yeah, that's quite interesting. And a couple of questions for you. Summoning, what's your view? Oh, we already covered that. Too powerful or, or okay, we've found so far it's not too bad, but no one in our group is really one to push it to the max. I think that's really the main point is like, if you're trying to abuse the rules, there's so many things in Age of Sigmar that you can do, but I mean, you know, who's going to play you again if you're like that? Um, also, somebody came up with a great rule that if you kill the summoner, all of his summons die. I like that. Like, it, it makes sense to me. Um, I would definitely play with that rule. Um, this has been very effective at making summoning work for us. Uh, bases, looking forwards, so nothing already done. Are you going round or square bases for your collections? Um, we're doing all the new ones on rounds, um, or the rounds that we have available. The old ones, I think at some point, will be put on rounds. Um, I mean, I've got a lot of High Elves that I need to paint, Shadow Warriors, Phoenix Guard and stuff. I'll probably put them on rounds as well. Um, so yeah, rounds definitely preferable, I think. Um, but I don't think there's any issue leaving them on squares, you know, if you're... If you've got a massive collection and you really don't want to buy new bases and rebase all your collection, just don't. I mean, there's nothing stopping you using the models on squares. And um, I don't think they look bad at all. Even if you mix them with, with rounds, I, I don't think they look bad. It's just kind of, I guess from a perfectionist point of view, you kind of want everything to be the same. So uh, yeah, that's my take on it. Okay, um, what else do we have here? Jay Donahoe is asking, he says, I'd like to see the story played out with actual factions from the fiction as much as possible. They might be planning on releasing hardcover books every month forever. Okay, here's a question. They clearly want to replicate the 40k success with Age of Sigmar, and the most popular element of 40k is the Horus Heresy. Do you think they are setting up a big dramatic event at the end of the current story about reclaiming the realms? Stormcast still have free will and still have memories, regress, issues from their former lives. I could see a long-term storyline about a Stormcast heresy as a possibility. That sounds really um, interesting. Uh, it's a good question. Um, I've kind of thought, how is this storyline going to progress? And you know, obviously, we're going to get more books covering, like the you know how the Stormcasts are reclaiming the realm of death and the realm of beasts and all these other things, but. At what point, um, you, you know, at what point does the story kind of move on from Stormcast reclaiming the mortal realms? Because, uh, you know, to have the, the story's got to sit at a point where there's conflict. So, like, it can't be just the Stormcast, you know, they, they beat chaos and, uh, you know, it's a happy, everybody lives happily ever after. There has to be um, a point where the story just continues evolving, but there is, there is combat and, and uh, you know, um, clashes of armies, so I'm not sure how what direction that's going to go. That sounds interesting. That you know, similar to the kind of Horus Heresy, where Stormcast kind of, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. If you look at them like 30k armies, or or like the Heresy with like Horus betraying the Emperor and stuff like that, I'm sure they could do something like that. Imagine if the Celestine Prime turns out to be like like betray Sigmar or something, but. I, I don't know, you know, it's anybody's guess where Games Workshop will take the story. Um, I think anything's possible at this point in time. But yeah, it'd be cool if, if, it, if it did do something like that. Okay, next question from Sam Brick. What do you think about the summoning rules in EOS? We've already, we've already um, talked about that. Do you think they need balancing? Um, Personally, I don't mind a lot of Chaos vs. Stormcast because you guys match armies, realms, and scenarios to build a narrative. Um, okay, any more questions than this? OK, 
Okay, so Crucium Geiger is asking, uh, really enjoyed the channel. I found it through the Necromunda vids, so I hope we will see many more of these. Which gangs will we be seeing during the campaign, and how often will the vids be uploaded? So we've got um, we've got Escher, Orlock, and Goliath gangs at the moment, and Vansar. So we've got four gangs, and we've got some bounty hunters and uh, Carlos. Karloth Valois, the, the special character, and who else do we have? Some hard guns. So, you, you've not seen Escher yet, you've only seen Goliath and um, Vansar. So yeah, you'll definitely be seeing more gangs. Um, in terms of frequency of, of videos, it, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we want to kind of get into more of a, so we're covering the other games as well a lot more often. So I think that's going to come when we get into kind of more of a production mode. Um, yeah, because Necromunda is great. Like, we really enjoy it. Um, and the games are pretty quick, so... Doc Raven here is saying, Please make more videos about Mordheim Battlefleet Gothic. And if you like to play the Aeos story with Chaos and Stormcast, then do it. But Chaos is so much more than lame corn boys. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will do more Mordheim and BFG. Um, I kind of feel bad in a way actually that we haven't done more of it, um, but at the same time we've just been getting carried away with Age of Sigmar, um, but yeah, we, we will definitely. Uh, what do you think of experimental warbands? Um, for more time I guess? Um, yeah, it's fine, I mean I think, I can't remember off the top of my head which ones are the experimental ones, is that the, like the Shadow Warriors and the Amazons and stuff? Um, some of them are quite overpowered. I think Shadow Warriors are quite powerful, like in in more time. Um, so you know, when when we, when I put together the gangs that we have for more time, so we've got Witch Hunters, we've got Undead, we've got uh, Middenheimer, Reichlander, Marienberger, we have. Um, what else do we have? We've got the Sisters of Sigmar. They're really cool, and we've got a couple more. We've got about maybe seven or eight gangs for more time, and they're all original models as well, which are quite hard to get. So, um, yeah, you should see more of them soon. Uh, what do you think is the reason from Games Workshop to not place other races in a game like Necromunda, Eldar, Chaos, Orcs, etc.? Well, I mean, it's meant to be kind of battles in the Underhive, isn't it, of like the Imperial cities, so I don't really know whether you can, you know, with Eldar and Chaos and stuff, I I don't know, it's, it's more kind of, it wouldn't fit the story, I don't think. I think because Underhive is kind of, you know, where you've got houses fighting each other for power and, you know, becoming like, the, you know, making as much uh, coins of from all the trade and stuff. I think it's quite fitting to have it just everybody's human, but they're just different types of gangs, pretty much. Um, that was for Necromunda. Um, need art now. Question for you. Can you take us on a tour of your room? All the stuff on your shelves, the area you build, paint minis, etc. Would be great to get a backstage view into everything. Great work on your channel so far, very impressive. Well, thanks very much, Need Art Now. Um, I do plan on doing a video, um, like behind the scenes video, where we kind of show you how we film the battle reports. Um, if you've joined the painting hangouts, you would have seen where we normally paint, which is in the house with the kind of computer desk, like a large dining table with a couple of computers and all our paints and stuff set up there. And um, even just to show you outside and show you kind of the building and like the house and stuff where we're, where we're based. I'll do something like that um, at some point soon, yeah. So Nev Room here is asking, considering the war scroll for the High Elf Archers gives a buff when firing while more than three inches away from enemy units, I have taken that to mean that Games Workshop does intend that units can shoot while in close combat. Otherwise it would be a buff at all times as they wouldn't be allowed to shoot within three inches of an enemy. I know you guys have house ruled that they can't, so do you still think that is working better? Well, we're playing right now that you can shoot into combat and shoot out of combat. Um, you know, just like the rules, they don't say you can't, so uh, originally we thought that you couldn't, but 
Um, that was after a quick scan of the rules for our first few games. And yeah, we're playing that you can. Um, although sometimes I don't think it really makes sense. Like th that's one thing I liked about like the Azure comp. It allows you to, you can shoot at, you know, an enemy that's engaged with your own troops, but they divide the shots. So half of them go to your friendly unit, half of them to the enemy unit and some other cool stuff. So I think some house ruling and stuff can make sense. And I mean, I certainly, I would prefer playing like that to just playing that you can shoot at your uh, enemy models that are fighting your guys. Um, that to me um, doesn't make as much sense. So, but yeah, I mean, if you're just rules as written, there's nothing that says you can't. And you're right about that buff for the high elf archers. Um, yeah, so I think I think that Games Workshop did intend to allow you to do that. Um, he's also saying, um, how is the channel doing? Are you seeing any decent growth? Uh, yeah, I think the channel's doing really, really well. Um, we're up to over 2,000 subscribers now. Um, Pat we're getting quite a lot of support on Patreon as well, which is great. And th the feedback and the views is is really good. So um, I think the channel's going, you know, we've only been going really for sort of th less than three months. And to get that kind of growth, I think, you know, for any uh, channel on YouTube, the hardest part is starting out and, you know, getting your content out there and getting people to watch it. And it becomes more of a snowball effect as you get bigger, you get the exposure anyway, because in related searches in YouTube and because people know you and they, sh they share your content on Facebook and stuff like that, as you get bigger, it's easy easier to keep getting bigger. So I think the hardest part is probably at the start. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with, with um, how the channel's been doing. And do you consider the 45 pound books worth the money from a lore fluff point of view, especially the newest one about finding the hammer? That's uh, this one, the quest for Galmaraz. So they are quite expensive. Um, it depends how regularly they release them, I guess, because I mean, you don't want to be buying um, too many of them, I guess, you know, if it's like a t really regular thing. Like I love reading the story and understanding, um, you know, the fluff, how the narrative's um, evolving. Um, I think they are worth it. I know there's a lot of wasted pages in here, like they're, they give you the rules again, which you probably already have like five copies. They give you war scrolls, which again, you probably have a couple of copies of them. Um, a lot of the artwork looks like computer generated and not a lot of, you know, uh, visual interest in the artwork, I would say. Like uh, Color of the Gods did a really funny review of the book uh, where he was just like, <laughs> he sounded, you know, quite angry at, you know, how, uh, you know, for what he paid, he wasn't that happy or didn't seem that happy about that he was getting value for money. But you still get the story, which I, I like a lot. And um, I think is worth it. I mean, it, I feel, I definitely feel like I get value for money on something like a book, um, more so than even a miniature, I would say, because like with the book, there's just so much cool stuff in it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, I, I think they're worth it. I'm going to keep buying them as the story goes on. It, you know, as long as they're not releasing like a new book every week and expecting you to pay 50 quid for it um, or every two weeks, that's too much for me. But if it's a book every couple of months or something, then yeah, I don't, I don't, don't really mind. But I mean, I guess different people have different opinions on that. Um, Okay, so David Parfit here is saying, hi lads, I've really enjoyed the channel so far. I suppose this would be semi-related to the mic question, but I was just wondering if you had discussed some chat in the video that is not direct commentary. Could just be minor things such as reasons for making a move, maybe explaining a bit of backstory between two units who dislike each other, or just a bit more back and forth between the players. Obviously, I re realize that as you say, you are new to this and may just be concentrating on getting the video and commentary right for now which I say is fair enough. Anyway, just a suggestion, hope you keep putting out the quality. Um, yeah, I, I think um, the more kind of, um, more things that break up the, you know, if, if you're in the movement phase, for example, if it's just this model moves here, this model moves here, this model moves here, it can kind of get a bit boring. Like you've got to kind of change it up a bit or add a little bit of dialogue uh, wherever you can. Uh, we tend to kind of, a lot of the stuff we say in between doing t 
turns and movements isn't in the camera footage because you know the way we record is like we'll talk about what we're doing get 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 ready to do it and then the camera goes on and we do it so um sometimes i think you know when i'm editing and i'm putting clips together of movement phase or something where it's like this model moves six inches then he moves six inches and he moves six inches it's just like well that's, that doesn't really sound too interesting so if we can get more dialogue into it without making it like uh drawn out um i think that's a good thing and um yeah it's definitely something we'll work on and uh what else do we have here Uh, dialogical saying I'd have to agree side with those who would prefer seeing the old armies go through the campaign instead of always seeing the Stormcast Eternal face off against the Corn Bloodbound. Like you said, any army could basically do most, if not all, of the scenarios. We'd love to see some greenskins, but Skaven will be a popular horde style army stand in. I guess foremost paint and play what you'd like to, I'd say, but I personally prefer the charismatic Warhammer Fantasy battle armies like the Lizardmen, Tomb Kings, etc enter the stage more often keep up the good work so not really a question there but um yeah i think you know we're kind of collecting them other armies um trying to get a bit more variation so we've got some death s quite a lot of chaos and order now um destruction we'll probably get some orcs and goblins um so that we can vary our play out a bit and um yeah so that kind of brings us to an end of the q a um i guess uh questions from me this week see we've been doing these painting hangouts recently so uh, a l we talk a lot in the painting hangouts so all the sorts of questions and th like new stuff that's been coming out what we think of this lesson prime and you know um the the dread fort and our plans for um you know stuff that we're going to show on the channel like we do a lot of that kind of talking um in our painting hangouts so um i guess um yeah that's, that's kind of it for this episode of q a so Again, if you'd like to put your questions down for the next one below, um, that'd be great. Then I can just, you know, take that page and, and then we can work through that again. Um, I hope I've answered all of your questions. I hope I didn't miss anything there. Um, but um, yeah, so until the next one, guys, uh, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And, uh, uh, you know, spread the word. Check us out on Facebook. We're using Facebook a lot more now. Um, and yeah, if you'd like to support us on Patreon, then, then that'd be great. We, we much appreciate all the help that we can get. So until next time, adios.